Hello everybody, it's Derek Dimmitt and Marshawn Powers here, getting you ready for the USFL Championship game this Saturday evening at Tom Benson Stadium in Canton, Ohio. How you doing, Marshawn? I'm doing good, man. I can't complain. I'm excited for it. Well, bittersweet, bittersweet, but also excited, man. This is this is the last week of UFL, but it's the champion game. So I mean, I, I feel both teams is gonna be ready, and we're and now I get a different view. You know, normally I'd be in the press box, you know, eating good, getting oh, good yeah. snacks, but this week I'm gonna be on the sideline. You know, as a photographer, I'm gonna be be a novice photographer but hey man I'm, I'm gonna make sure i get get shots and good video for for everybody that's that can't be able to yeah we'll definitely have better photos than from up in the press box greeny on an iphone <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just kind of talk here get you ready for the game and uh kind of break down the three phases for each team strengths and weaknesses um we'll start with the stallions offense go ahead and give your thoughts on birmingham's potent offense man i mean they're they're often i mean what, what, what needs to be said i mean alex Mago, alex Magoo is just a, a freak of nature a guy who no, I mean, it's been floating around the timeline and i don't i don't know nobody's been so i'm pretty sure you've seen it but this guy, Alex Magoo, is definitely going to be in somebody's NFL uniform in the next, I'll say probably the next week and a half to two weeks, he's going to be on somebody's roster. That's how great this man is playing. He's, what, over 2,000 yards, 21 touchdowns. Right. He's a dual quarterback because he could do it with his legs. You know what I mean? And he's doing it with Jake Stoneburger. I, a lot of fans remember that name. He's doing it. I mean, he's this dude is lighting it up, man. I, 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 I mean, I could easily pick certain things like the the pop, but he's just been great everywhere. You know, last week against New Orleans, New Orleans was getting the best of him until you know they they put a cheap shot and knocked him out the game for one play, bloodied him up. You could just see the competitive nature, just the toughness that he has. And it's like after that, after he came back after one play, it was just like. To the wall, you know, he was just playing. It's on fire. So I think that's going to be – I think that's the number one task for the Maulers. I mean, they're the number one defense. I mean, number one defense going against number one offense. They're the number one defense for a reason. I mean, they're, they're great at every level. So, you know, that's going to be a extreme challenge at every level. D-line – linebacker secondary is to stop a guy who is dangerous both with his arm and with his legs. Yes, definitely. Um, he encompassed all that in one play when these two teams faced off earlier the year earlier this year in Canton. Um, it was late in the fourth quarter and a play broke down and he looked dead to rights for a sack. He spun out of like two or three different sacks, ended up finding a receiver in the back of the end zone. I think they timed it. It was about mm -hmm. 12 seconds of scrambling, and then he was able to throw a seed to a guy in the back of the end zone, and they ended up winning 24 to 20. So it was that, and then a big return, and we'll get to that when we talk special teams. But go ahead and break, a, break down the Mahler's offense for us, led by Troy Williams. It's not, I mean, how can I say this? It's not. A pretty offense, but it's not a world beating offense. Like it's a bland to the eye. So with the with the with the Maulers, most of their return guys, like you say, we'll talk about return in a second, but most of their return guys are their wide receivers. You got guys like um I'm trying to off the top of my head, Ishmael Hyman, who they just got former Browns player. I know a lot of you guys remember him. You got guys like Joshua Simmons, Isaiah Henney, who both are extremely dangerous in the return game. You have uh, Bailey Gaither, who, you know, is a Swiss Army knife. You know, Bailey Gaither reminds me so much of uh, – I remember – I can't think of the kid that, that was the quarter – that was a receiver for Clemson. Caught the game when he touchdown on Alabama. 
freaking um I can't think of his name off the top of my head. But anyways, he like I say he's a Swiss Army knife, really extreme good slot receiver. But then on the run game, you have you have a two headed monster with Gary Grosheck and Madre London. So I feel like in order in order in order for the offense to look better than what they have this week, it's gonna be all hands on deck. Can't be a a situation where you know everything is on Troy Williams' shoulders. You know, I think that's a recipe for disaster. I think the entire line needs to be uh, protected from Leon Johnson at right tackle to uh, Braylon Braden Patton at center. You know, so I think I think the entire offense has to be on sync because let's be real. You know, I, I know we're we'll get to defense later, but I mean Birmingham's de- the Birmingham defense isn't. The world's best, you know. It, out of, out of all playoff teams, it was that it was the fourth. It was worse, you know. So I feel like I feel like this offense. I think, uh, man, this is gonna have to be a game where the offensive coordinator, where uh, Emerson. I mean, not Emerson. Yeah, Emerson Martin, a guy they're high on. Alex Wood, another guy who they're high on. Rick Rick, Court, Rick Courtright, the game coordinator. This is gonna be times where guys like that have to you know, scheme up things, scheme up their best. Because I mean, you're you're limited, but you got enough guys to where you can still be explosive. Right, definitely, and we've seen that um, sometimes with Troy Williams. You know, tucking it in and taking it himself, he's done very well. He's actually, you know, yards wise, one of their better, better rushing stats. Like you mentioned, the two headed monster that they do feature. Um, so let's switch it over onto the defensive side. Uh, which team do you want to start with? Uh, let's start with the let's start with Birmingham only specifically because you know Birmingham's not, their, their defense is not better than obviously the Pittsburgh, and we're going to be on Pittsburgh for a little bit. All right, so base so, uh, uh, with Pittsburgh with. It's not Pittsburgh. With the Birmingham defense, don't get me wrong, man. They got they they have a stout they have a stout DB. His, his last name is Allen, the guy who who uh, basically ended in New Orleans. Like they have him a stout DN, but at the end of the day, that's that's just it. That's all you really hear about. You know, I I think uh, if I'm not mistaken, they give up somewhere around up to twenty points a game. Yeah. I'm gonna say around 20, is it 20, 24 points a game, somewhere around there? And uh, the last time they played, the last time they – go ahead. Oh, I was just pulling it up here. They actually ended the year at 19 uh, points per game, so just under that 20-point mark. Just not this. So, okay. so, 19, so they're at 19 points a game. They gave up 20 to uh, Pittsburgh the last time they played. So, so it's not like Pittsburgh doesn't know what type of defense they're coming into. I think, I think we seen how good their defense can be last week against New Orleans. When, like I say, when they're in sync, when they're playing, when they're playing their best, when they're playing. I'm not gonna say they play. They mixed up. They started a little bit with zone, then they went to man. I think they could be. I think this is my opinion. I think their zone is. I think I think man to man defense is. is they they're better at man to man than zone. If 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 Troy Williams and the receivers find a little continuity, I think they can find soft spots in that zone because I seen at the beginning of the game, New Orleans was going like the first couple of drives. New Orleans was going up and down, you know, easily. They they had a turnover to turn over the when they do a touchdown the second one, second drive. So I feel like after you know pick and pick and pick and choose how they want to attack that zone, like I say, because it's it's really not. Anything as world beater as far as as far as the run game, I think you're going to need Troy Williams. You're going to so you're going to need Troy. You're going to need Madra. You're going to need uh, Grushek to at least get you one five. If they don't get you one five total, then they're not going to win this game. If I'm not mistaken, the last six games that I I mean last six games I covered got in over a hundred yards total. Four out of those six games, so. And they won two. They won two, three of those games. So, today, man, they just got to attack that. Like I said, that style's offense. Now, for the Pittsburgh defense, it all, it all, it all comes down to that secondary. That secondary is, I mean, man, where to start? 
You got Arnold, you got Tarpley, you got Mark Gilbert, Eli Walker, Keith Gibson, Xavier Lewis is a guy who I who I like, and then Malcolm Elmore whenever he gets his his place. They they really 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 have a having a main secondary, and I mean that's that's going to be the bread and butter for the Pittsburgh's offense. I don't think I mean not Pittsburgh the uh, Birmingham's offense. I think Birmingham is going to try to throw the ball because I think Pittsburgh is going to be able to stop the run. I mean you got arguably the best one-two linebacker combo with uh, Tazino and I mean, everybody knows about Ruben Foster. No, it's really nothing getting past those guys. And so I think, I think honestly, you know, with, with the, and they run it, they run a weird defense. Do you know what type of defense Pittsburgh runs? I do not, but it's something, something that those Hortons really work on. They run a four, they run a four, they run a four, two, five. I've never been a fan of the four two five defense because the Browns were in it last year. But they run a four two five defense. They only got two guys, Boogie Roberts and Sakapu. I always mess his name up. Yeah. That's 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 getting rushed. Everybody else, Nasir player, another guy that that's a as a stand up guy, stand up passer. But like I said, only getting they only getting pass rush. I mean, three to four guys without blitzing. So I mean, and they're if they could get home like that with having to send five guys without having to change up what they do, it's going to frustrate Magoo extremely well. And like I say, if they can do what they did this few weeks where they get turnovers early in the game, two things two things that the defense has to do to, to get one. Multiple turnovers um, and, and, a, and a very different offense because they do get a lot of penalties. I think uh, a few weeks ago, Coach Horton was talking about how you know, the team at one point had eight penalties in one game before a main of and a lot of them came from defense. So I think if they t- if they clean that up and just you know, and, you know discipline, I mean, who say that this team what you told me before we got on their seven point underdog, who's to t- who's to say that this team, you know, can't can't do the uncle? Right, yeah, and they led the league in interception. So like you said, winning that turnover battle is very very important for Pittsburgh. Um, and then as we move over into special teams, you mentioned it a little bit when we touched on the offense for Pittsburgh, but uh, Josh Simmons and Isaiah Henney. Yeah, man, two of the two of the most dangerous you know, returners I've ever seen. I, I've seen both players in one game take 50 yards. They didn't, they didn't, one took one to the house, the other just had a yard return but to see both of those guys you know be able to get big returns at any point I mean then you have Chris Blewett you know I know that that name sounds very 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 skeptical I mean uh skeptical to to sketchy to fans you know you he misses it he misses a kick you could joke all day to say he blew it but if he don't mix a kick you know that man's a he's a he's a he's an animal you know he's one of the most consistent kickers got a big leg made a 59 yarder Few, uh, la- last week, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Last week, and then, and then, you know, his 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 holder, Matt Mingle, a three yard punt. So yeah. I have they have the defensive edge, they have the special teams edge, but is offensively they have to show the Maulers. You know, their special teams is. I mean, I was looking at the list of uh, players of the year, and you had a couple special teams plays on there. You had a defensive play on there. So I mean, they have that 100% edge is, is is their way when it comes. Uh, as as far as for the um for the the stallions, the stallions aren't aren't that bad as far as uh you know kickoffs, returns, stuff like that. They were you know, fourth overall, fourth overall in the league. They had what, 1100 1100 yards. Two touch, two touchdowns. So you know, they have more touchdown, more touchdown returns than than the than the uh, Mauler. But at the end of the day, a lot of their the Maulers still average a little bit more yards on return per return than those guys with less returns too. You no, know, I mean it's gonna be. I, I, I as much as we want to sit here all day and break it down, we can sit here and have another conversation you know, on who's the better coach. You know, their coach or or, or coach. Uh, Coach Coach Horton, you know, it, it, we can sit forever, man. It's time to put those straps on, lace up, lace, lace up your Nike cleats, man, and it's time to have some fun, man. Yeah, that uh, 
one of those two kickoff returns for the Stallions actually came against the Maulers. It was a uh, Dion Kane went 92 yards, and that was the deciding score in that game back in May. Like you said, two very well mm-hmm. coached, ta- very well coached teams, and it's just going to come down to like you called it with the talking defense. It's going to come down to the turnovers and uh, the possession battle, time of possession, you know, starting field position. Those are going to be very big factors coming Saturday night. Anything the past else? Oh, two weeks ahead. I've seen. Yeah, yeah, just a quick thing. The past few weeks I've seen another thing I want to say about the Maulers offense. The past few weeks I've seen situations where, you know, the, the defense would get them a turnover, but they nothing with the drive. That has to be an emphasis this week. If the defense gets you turnovers, if you don't touch down, turn it in three points, that's fine, but you cannot leave any empty drives that result in the turnover. You cannot. Or that's, you know, I mean, that was cool against the Stars. That was cool against the Panthers. That's not going to be cool against the number one offense in the. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, be sure to check out Believe Land Media the rest of the week. We'll have some more preview things and talk about the season ending awards. Um, they're announcing the MVP on Friday. Marsha and I will be a part of that press conference, so we'll have that breakdown for you as well. And then, of course, Saturday night, be sure to follow us on all of your socials. Myself, it's Derek underscore Dimmit, and it's Sir Sean underscore 90. Yes, sir. All and right. then on Instagram, <laughs> it's Sir Sean Sir 90, no underscore Instagram, no underscore Instagram. Go on Twitter, Sir Sean underscore 90. All right. Thank you, sir, for your time. Thank you, listeners, for taking some time to listen to our preview, and we'll talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.